Welcome to the Crime Redefined podcast produced by Zero Cliff Media. Coming to you from the U.S. Bank Tower, high above downtown Los Angeles. In our podcast, we drill deep into forensics and criminal investigation from the viewpoint of the defense, as well as explore the intersection of the media and the justice system. I'm Dion Mitchell here once again with my co-host, Mehul Jeria. We hope all you listeners are doing well and enjoying Crime Redefined. Today, we are going to continue our series on the 2018 disappearance of Terrence Woods. Well, Dion, as this series continues, um, and the more we learn about this, it just the more it boggles the mind as to why Terrence's story hasn't received more attention. I mean, as, as we've hit over the head a million times, if there was even some basic investigation, not to say that that would solve it, but at the minimum, I mean, my gosh, at least you could eliminate some of the possible scenarios for what may have happened to Terrence. You know, right now, there's so many possible options. You know, you, you and I even talk about it all the time. So right now, I mean, all we can do is, you know, for our part is to keep the spotlight on this. And so, you know, our request of our, of our listeners and our social media followers, you know, please help spread the word so that as many people as possible can hear this. And hopefully one or more of those people have some great info for Terrence's family. You know, I hate to go, you know, off the rails right off the track, but here's one thing that's you can see how conspiracy theories can get started really, really easily because there's the basic things in this particular case that weren't done, or at least as far as we know, weren't done. And so you start asking the question, why? You know, why weren't these basic, you know, protocols or investigation tools utilized? And then there it starts to, you know, kind of mount up, man, what, what, what are they hiding? And there could be nothing wrong. They could have done everything great, but yet you can see how this can gain traction. Yeah, you definitely can. And, and I would just say that as bizarre and scary as the lack of an investigation is, I mean, take a look at criminal case investigation, you know, yeah, more so old ones that you look at from the cold case or post conviction that'll shock you. But even today, I mean, what we think should happen just doesn't always happen. Well, to continue on with our, I guess, our investigation, we have the pleasure of speaking with Rochelle Newman, who became friends with Terrence in the UK. Along with Terrence Wood Sr., she has basically headed up an international missing persons campaign. If you happen to see the Dr. Phil episode on Terrence's disappearance, you're familiar with Rochelle. Uh, She's also done some, some excellent work keeping Terrence's story alive on social media. But as you'll soon find out uh, after we talk with her a bit, this whole saga, Dion, has really taken quite a bit of a toll on her. It sure has. And uh, there's a real darkness surrounding Terrence's disappearance and lackluster investigation thereof. Rochelle will take us through some of the key issues that have made this missing person case particularly challenging. Yeah, and it's kind of like a two-person team investigating it. I mean, it seems like Terrence Sr. and Rochelle are the only people who are, you know, really actively pursuing answers to the extent possible um, because things have went cold, people aren't talking. Uh, it, it's just sad that we're now approaching the three-year anniversary and, you know, these clues are getting colder and colder. But, uh, you know, a, another part of us doing the series is to talk to people close to Terrence And we want to put out there, you know, what is the true essence of Terrence? Not just what are the hot takes about him or the loose suggestions that maybe he's somehow to blame for this or he had mental issues or any of that. So hopefully we're we're bringing some balance to the story. No doubt. And when there is limited coverage of a story, it is very, very hard for it to be balanced. I hope we are doing at least some small part to balance it out. As a bit of a tease to today's interview, Rochelle has some new information to share. Let's see what her take on Terrence himself and the events leading up to his disappearance are. Rochelle, thank you so much for joining us on Crime Redefined today. Hi. Hi, Thank you for having me. Great. We're we're really looking forward to learning more about Terrence Woods and what can be done to help find him. Yes, yes, because it needs to happen now. So listen, uh, you ready to dive in? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so first, let's start with you. Uh, Tell us about Mm -hmm. what you do for a career. So I 
okay at the moment I'm a TV director but for the last five years I've been working in true crime so I've been helping I've done over 60 murders in the UK and US um I studied criminology and sociology and I've always been interested in why people do certain things and the why we act the way we do sometimes so um yeah I've been doing crime I've come out of crime now since Terence's um since Terence's case last year, so since the Black Lives Matter movement and all of those things happened, I've decided to come out of crime because it just got too much. It got too overwhelming. I went from helping victims' family members to becoming a victim's family member. So mm. I found that very difficult. So I've decided just to move into children's TV for a while. <laughs> yeah, I could see that, but it sounds like you're one of us. Yeah, it does. I am. <laughs> but it's so, it's so it's so difficult, I think, in... I've done the whole international campaign, literally kind of by myself for a few of people, but everyone's so scared to speak up. So I've literally put my life and put my career on the line to make sure that Terence's story stays relevant, that we find out what happens to Terence and to ensure that it never happens to one of us ever again. Ab so, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and you know, just to kind of go from there, how did you first meet Terence? So this is what is very interesting. We both went, we both started out on a TV production scheme. So Terence was in the year below me and we met at an event. Can you, can you back uh, up for a second? A TV production what? A scheme. So okay. it's a scheme that helps young people get into the TV industry. Gotcha. So that's where we met. Terence was in the year below me. Um, and we met at a couple of events and we went out a couple of times, all of us all together um, as young people starting off in the TV industry. And that's how, yeah, that's how we met. Well, so Rochelle, how is it that you first found out that Terrence was missing? So his auntie actually contacted, was contacting everyone on Facebook saying that Terrence was missing. And I was like, what do you mean Terrence is missing? And she's just like, she's sending us all of this information, these articles. And that's how I found out. Um, and that night, I started sending out an email. I've never written a press release, release in my life before Terence's story. I was just writing like a crazy woman, put a picture of him there, put some information about what happened. And I sent this out to loads of journalists in the UK and in the US. And no one got back to me apart from a journalist who worked for The Guardian. Um, and he forwarded it on to another journalist who lived near Idaho, like an hour away from Idaho. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember his name right now, but he said he would be able to help. And he spoke to Terence's mom and he did nothing after that because news moves on. And that was it. Well, I, I have there's something I have to follow up on. And we'll probably talk about this later on in the interview. Mm. But you kind of dropped a bomb and you said that mm. you were concerned about your life as you were covering this yeah. story. Can you, can you go into a little bit about that, about what exactly I'm happened? still concerned about my life. I'm still concerned about my life. Wow even till this day. So Terence has gone missing. He went missing in Idaho, which is obviously a very strange, unusual place. <laughs> um, I live in England and I'm a small black woman who's trying to, who's running an international missing persons campaign and who is black. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm black. Yeah. People are going to try and get me. And I just know that Discovery Channel and Raw have a lot of money. And now I'm saying this on the podcast, it's going to go out there anyways. They've got a lot of money. They can do what they want. Um, and I know how it goes. This world is not nice. There's a lot of horrible people out there. And when people have a lot of money, they can do certain things. Was there anything horrible. specific that, uh, you know, through social media that, that popped up that made you to be really concerned? Um, yes, yeah, someone was messaging me asking how long I was on the Terrence on the Dr. Phil show for random person and um, people just asking a lot of weird questions and because I started talking to some of the private investiga investigators who weren't really private investigators about the case so they obviously found out my name from Dr. Phil and all of these articles um so it got to a point where I was just like I need to kind of step back from this a bit but my name's already out there so we just run with it you know, prior to Terrence's disappearance, um, mm. did how well did you, did you know did you know his father? Um, no, 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 no. So you never talked to him or anything like never that. Never talked to him. I talked to Mr. T. I call him Mr. T because I find it weird saying Terrence. Um, I talked to Mr. T probably every other day or once a week, depending on how busy I am. Never. It was so just that's Terrence. how you 
So you're working with them right now. Uh, that yeah. was my next question. Have you been, how have you been working with them? Yeah. Parent Story Live. So you yeah, guys are in pretty good contact? Yeah, all the time. I'm probably the only one that keeps in contact with him all the time. And Terence had closer friends in the UK and US. And people, I understand that people are scared and all of these things, but there's a missing person, regardless of if he's a man, a woman, black, white, or Asian, he's That's missing. Right. He's missing full stop. But people have just gone on with their normal lives, having kids, getting married, all of these things. And I'm just like, how can you and not say nothing, not continue to put his name out there? Even if it's a tweet every now and then or something to find out if Mr. Woods is okay, message him. Find out if I'm okay, message me. Anything. But no, people have just, okay, Terence has gone missing, let's go on. And I understand that it's hard for people to understand that he's gone missing, but you need to have a bit of a backbone when it comes to things like this. So that's my problem with everyone. In terms of publicity, would you say that the Dr. Phil show was was the thing that shown the biggest spotlight on the issue? The thing is with the Dr. Phil show is that it's shown the biggest spotlight on Terence's disappearance. Um, and that was the biggest we were going to get, we realized at the time, because we did have other shows contacting us, looking at my social media, people all over my story, messaging me here and there. It got so overwhelming last year, but they weren't as big as Dr. Phil. And I knew that it would have been difficult for us to get it on Dr. Phil because it took two, three months for them to do all the law, um, all of the um go over all of the paperwork because of Discovery Channel and Raw. So we recorded the episode two to three months before it actually went out because there were issues, there were legal issues. But they stuck with it, even though it didn't come out the best as it could have come out, they stuck with it and they still put it out. Um, and from that, I have had people contact me about the show and about seeing Terrence in Idaho, not where he people assume that he was last seen but a lady did contact me who had seen him in the store I can't remember what the name of the store is but she saw him in a store I put all of this information there's so much um this, a lady saw him in a store and he was acting very like he needed to get stuff now like the sandwiches and everything as you do when you're a production assistant you don't have right. time to get every, anything because no one gives you time everyone's in a hurry when you're on production right so she was just saying he's he was just in a hurry and he needed to get whatever sandwiches and fruits he needed to get it now and this was and during production this was during the production before they say he went to the penman mines allegedly okay. Okay, and then I just want to make sure it's clear uh, that mm -hmm. you haven't had anybody message you or get in contact with you that have seen him post the, post missing. But this was all no. sightings during, during during the production, correct? This is only before, so before yeah, during the production, but before the fifth of October. Okay, and this was actually and this was in Idaho. This was right? in Idaho. Okay. A lady said she saw him. She served him at the store. Um, and what she did say to me, whether she's telling the truth or not, all she said is, Rochelle, someone's hiding something. I don't know if it's the production team, and I don't know whether it's the sheriff's office. I don't know, but someone's hiding something. And she also mentioned that people go missing in Idaho all the time. She yeah, said, people go, hmm. you know, before we, I want, we're going to take a deeper dive into the big investigation, but I want to take yeah. a quick little turn and find out more about Terrence, the individual. And yeah. if you don't mind, please share some stories about him, maybe some information of like what he was like, was he in a relationship, mm -hmm. what kind of music mm -hmm. did he like, hobbies, yeah. interests, that type of stuff. So I would say Terrence is, he's quiet, a quiet person unless he knows you. So if he knows you, then he'll open up a bit to you, but he's very reserved, very quiet, but very loving and caring. Um, he loves traveling which is the reason why he's always loved London as well. That's why he was in London, because he just loved it here. I don't know why, because I'm trying to get over to LA <laughs> and he wanted to come over to England. I don't understand it. But, um, and he, yeah, he just loved traveling, but he liked to be by himself quite a bit when he was traveling and filming. Um, but kind of a free spirit, I would say. And he had different groups of friends. So he had, like his TV friends, and then some people, majority actually of his friends were actually in the TV industry, but he met people through people. And that's how he kind of got along in London. Well, you know, Rochelle, something that was brought up was that before he went missing, uh, story goes that he was with the crew at a restaurant, 
and he met mm -hmm. a young lady and exchanged mm -hmm. numbers. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Is that something that is, you know, within Terrence's character to do? I don't know if Terrence has that kind of like, um, that's just like, should I say game? <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> I don't know if he has that sort of game or confidence. The only way he would say it, like with us lot in the TV industry, we all were friends because we were on the same scheme. So I don't know if he has that sort of confidence to be, oh yeah, let's meet up. No, he doesn't. I'll be honest, he does not. And yeah. so he wasn't, when he, w he was gone, he was not in a relationship when, like in London or, or in Maryland? I think he was seeing someone in London. Um, yeah, he was seeing someone in London or he was in and out of a relationship in London. But um, I don't know how serious that was. Rochelle, did you ever know Terrence to have any sort of interesting health issues, whether they be mental no. or physical? No, no. mental, nothing. physical, nothing, nothing at all. Um, they say that he had possibly sleeping problems sometimes. Um, not sleeping problems, sorry, um, flying. So he had problems like when flying or something like that. But anytime I've met him or been around him, he's never mentioned it. I've never seen anything. Um, and any of his close friends who were with him have said that he didn't. Now, this is coming from them and coming from his family. You never really know what's going on with an individual themselves. Right. But from what we know and his medical stuff and what his dad said and his friends who have been with him in London, he didn't know. Yeah, obviously that was a big point. The, the, the team there, they were saying maybe he had some kind of a mental break, but usually those don't come out of the blue. So we, we had to ask that question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. That's what they're going to say. That's their story. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about this, this text message that he mm -hmm. received, uh, that Terrence Sr. received from his son and uh, stated that he's not sure it came from Terrence. What yeah. are your thoughts on that? I don't believe anything came from Terrence. Now, the lady who said that she saw Terrence in the supermarket when he looked like he, when he was in a rush, she said the time when he was there in that part of Idaho, she doesn't know how he reached to where they said he went missing within that certain amount of time. Now, I don't know how big Idaho is or anything like that, but she said the timings don't add up. Um, his social media, the pictures that he's posted on his social media, the last three or two that he's posted aren't synchronized with the ones that he posted beforehand. So the ones that he was posting while he was away in Montana or Idaho, wherever they say he is, aren't in the same kind of correlation. Um, and I just don't think it was Terrence. From the first time I heard that Terrence sent this text, I said, that's not Terrence. Because you just, I don't know, there's something that you just know. He never sent that text message. Someone else sent that from his phone. And that's why they won't give us the records of his phone. Wow. Um, Rochelle, you've kind of touched on this, but can you tell us about some of the specific ways that you've advocated for Terrence in the last few years? Oh, and, and, yeah, and, and what the importance or role of social media has been in that process? So we have i've been posting about terence's disappearance on twitter since it happened and mm -hmm. telling people even people in the tv industry in the uk in london have said that if it wasn't for me they wouldn't have known about terence's disappearance no kidding now raw have said that they let people know that terence went missing when it happened i was just like no you did not because no one knew about it um, so I've used Twitter um, any moment that I get, whereas, for example, the, one of the heads of Raw, she went on to the Edinburgh TV Festival, which is like a big festival in the UK, um, talking about how we need to look after one another. And I was just like, well, you didn't look after Terence and no one's been able to help us find out where he is or what really happened to us. So what we did is kind of use that as a leverage to kind of tweet about his disappearance with the Fox News video. Um, and that got like thousands of retweets um, and thousands of people have viewed that. And then unfortunately, when the killing of George Floyd happened last year, I saw that as a way to get Sterrence's story out there, which really helped sure. because that's when I was able to send it to Deadline and send it to Vice. And then that's when um, Dr. Phil got in touch with us and all of the other talk shows in LA got back to us and were wanting to do his story. But we stuck out for Dr. Phil because um, it's got the biggest reach, which it does have. Do you have any more uh, appearances coming up? Um, not at the moment. We don't have anything. And it's coming up to his third, I don't even know what to call it, anniversary. Um, yeah, so we haven't got anything at the moment yet. 
um people don't really care that's i'll be totally honest with you in the uk they're just like oh this is a a u.s thing well not really because he was with a uk production company who were out in the u.s yes terence was um a u.s citizen but he was present in the uk for five years and he worked here and he went to study his masters here yeah i really find it mind-boggling that this hasn't been the torch hasn't been passed to you know, a big public figure that's really put some energy behind it and used their brand to to cast a big light on this. Apart from Brooke, what was her name? Brooke, um, one of the celebrities. Brooke, oh God, I can't remember her name. One of the celebrities, only Brooke. Hold on, guys. Brooke Shields, she mm. posted about it um, on her Instagram page. Um, but other than that, no one else. We've reached out to so many people, sent it to all of these big instagram news publications specifically the ones that are directed at and for black people nobody not one single person and if you speak to anyone about it no one wants to talk about it that's that's really kind of mind-boggling you know i i understand that you've done some investigating um yourself about terrence's disappearance Mm -hmm. and i've spoken and you've spoken to some people close to the case what if anything Mm -hmm. can you share that perhaps has not been made public? That hasn't been made public. I think the biggest thing is like the lady that I spoke to um, that saw him before the day before he disappeared, I've had people contact me anonymously who have worked at Raw TV and have heard people laughing and joking about Terence's disappearance, saying, that, oh, ha, 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 should we use some of the footage from um, the day that Terence disappeared? And that has made some people leave Raw TV um, because they felt so uncomfortable. So that's a piece of information that I can share. Um, People are scared to talk up. Um, People need to open their mouths. I don't care what happens in life or what you're going through at the moment. He's still missing. And that's what I find so difficult at the fact of that. If I, I came to LA last year, actually, to film true crime documentaries, um, just me and my cameraman. And when I was there, one of the district attorneys, um, there was at Sunset Drive. Um, he said to me, he said, Rochelle, be careful out here. And I said, why? He's like, Rochelle, you need to be careful out here. He's a white man and I'm a black man. He never said that to my white cameraman. And that's, that's the reality of it and reality of black people in general, which people don't understand. Wow, so this was a, a Los Angeles district attorney who told you that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year I went to LA and he just told me to be careful. Well, I wanted to ask you, Rochelle, um, about a Twitter exchange that you had recently. Mm. And not to put anyone on blast here, but just to understand the issue. And mm. so specifically, I'm referring to an organization that claims to support TV and film workers. Yeah. And you had a little mm-hmm. interchange with them. I, th- I think it might have been last week. Can you kind of yeah. break that down for us? So. I've contacted them before about help. Did I contact them? Yeah, I have. And then they contacted me saying, oh, Rashad, I'm sorry to say that no one's helped you. Let's have a chat. I've given you my email address, given you all my information. Great. Um, and they said, we'll talk. But then last week, all of a sudden, it's International Missing Persons Day, which I didn't even know. And they've tweeted about Terence's case, saying, well, we don't know why Terence disappeared. However, <laughs> this amount of people suffer with mental health. And I was like, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on a second. I haven't heard anything from you guys, but you're there tweeting about Terence's story before talking to myself, but most importantly, his family members, you're wrong. Making so inferences. Have- Exactly. Well, what does so mental they, health have to do with it? He's still missing, whether he had mental health issue or not. Or not, or not. So they have apologized and they've taken out the tweet. They are looking for, uh, what is it, a racism and, and bullying advisor, which people think I should go for. I'll think about it, but am I really going to get to say what I want to say about the TV industry and about the way we're treated? I don't know. So that, that's my problem. Even the, you know, even the scheme that we were on, it's one of the biggest organizations in the UK called PACT. That was the scheme that we were all on. They said they haven't mentioned Terrence at all, haven't spoken about him, nothing. And they've received some horrid emails from me just explaining, like, we are upset. We are dealing with a lot of mental health problems at the moment. Can you help? Oh, Rochelle, we're busy at the moment. Or I can talk to you, but can't talk to you about this. It's not good enough. No, it sounds kind of crazy if that's the whole pers- purpose of the organization, and yet they're doing yeah. nothing to lift a finger to, to help you out. 
help diversity or you're really helping diversity but yeah. helping when someone gets goes missing get out of here what do you think uh you know as i say there's a new sheriff in town what do you think about the change in the in idaho county with the new sheriffs and what are your thoughts about him being more open to digging deeper into terrence's case I haven't heard anything. All I've heard is that the the guy that did Terence's case that he left or they fired him and that there's gonna be someone more or there is someone. But my issue is it's coming up to three years now. The longer it goes on or the longer it's gone on already, is the less evidence there is. Unless one of the people that were with him on the team are gonna speak up, then we don't really have nowhere to go. Where, what what is he really going to do? The reason why they won't give out, they won't um, sort of it close Terence's case is because they know whatever's happened is very, very, very bad because they closed the lady's case, case that went missing. Like they said that she's deceased. Why don't you just do the same to Terence? It's because something more happened. So this leads to really the big question for you, Rochelle. Based on everything that you know and have uncovered, mm. What is your opinion on what most likely happened to Terrence? My opinion is that Terrence was being bullied by Simon G and whoever else on that team um, and that he wanted to come home. They probably wouldn't let him come home because that's what TV production is like, you know, TV and film. You need to be literally dying. No, you literally need to be dead before they can let you get away with anything. <laughs> wow. Um, and... That's what happened. So they were bullying him. He wanted to come home. And then maybe something happened. I don't know whether they got him to take something or whether he just ran. I don't know. But I know for certain that Simon G was bullying him and that crew. They were bullying him and something happened. I don't think it happened up on the Penman Mines where they, they say he was because I don't think he was there. I think something happened at the hotel um, in Idaho because his dad spoke to him, what was it, the night just before he went missing-ish, a couple of hours or the day before, and he spoke to him on the phone. So something happened there after he got off the phone to Mr. T. So so you don't actually think that he went missing at the actual no. locations, the no way. shooting site? No way. What, no what, way. Are your, what are your thoughts on the 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 local hire, the transportation lady, uh, Shuri, I, I believe her name was, saying that she saw him take off like a rabbit down the hill or, or something to that effect. I think what's something that's really important for everyone to know is that all this information that we've got about Terence's disappearance is coming from their mile, not mouths. And we cannot trust these people at all. We don't know anything about Terence's disappearance. Let's say we don't know anything about Terence's disappearance because we don't. All of this is coming from them. We don't have the other side of the investigation. Records. We don't have no nothing at all. I think the only way we can take it off is from when Mr. T dropped him at the airport and that's it. Other than that, do we know that he really arrived in Montana? Yeah, there's pictures on his, well, we, yeah, there's pictures on his Instagram of Montana. Um, so we know that he possibly got there. But then after that, what really happened to T? We don't know. So that, I, I, that's a question actually I've had for, for myself. I'm thinking about this. and But you believe that he made it to Idaho. Yeah, I think he possibly did make it to Idaho. Yeah, I think he did make it to Idaho. I don't think he made it up to where they said they were filming. I've spoken to like this Indians. Like, did you know like a real like a real Indians like actually exist? Like the ones that prey on the top of the mountains and all of that. Um, so I was searching through Instagram and this man who's like an Indian type of spiritual man, he went up to the mine where Terrence went missing. Um, he said he didn't see anything. I think this was 2020 he went up there or before that. And he said he didn't see anything, but what he did do is left a prayer at the top of the mountains um, for Terence. And he said that he had a vision that he might have got stuck in one of the like air vents and stuff. But, you know, these are just stuff that people say um, and what they believe. So that's his belief, um, which could be possible. But we, this is just every I don't even know, guys. I don't even know. Okay, so let me uh, let me do a hypothetical with you. I gave you mm. an unlimited budget yeah. and a team. What key things do you think need to be done in the investigation today? What would you do? I say, here you go, Rochelle. Boom. Everything you need is at your disposal. What are you doing? 
his phone records i'm going to look into first of all to find out if we can find out where the phone last was um i'm bringing in every single person from that crew in for questioning and no one is leaving until we get a clear timeline of what actually happened to terence um we're going to check his his bank accounts as well check his diaries his cameras we're going to get into that freaking laptop um and we want that paperwork from the sheriff's department as well and i think that's all, we're all. and the cctv from the hotel he was staying in because i don't know if you guys have seen that motel because we don't have really motels in the uk that motel looks scary <laughs> i wouldn't stay there we need everything mr t has terence's camera and the laptop but not the phone no, they said the phone is with Terrence, allegedly. Has, has anybody made an attempt to sue yeah. or one way or another to, to, get the, to get the records on where his phone had been pinged that day in the previous days? No, we don't even know how to do that. We, we, we've let, been left out in the open trying to get help from um, private investigators and the media, and we don't even know where, where to turn anymore. It was this... Was his phone um, a U.S. phone or a U.K. phone? A U.K. chip. So he has a U.K. chip number. Okay. Um, this area of Idaho, well, actually all of Idaho, unless you're mm. around Boise, is really, really remote. Yeah. So there's only a few repeaters, towers yeah. up there where it can ping. So it, it would be, there's only like, like a handful. So it would be mm. pretty, click, pretty quick you'd be able to zero in on See? his previous as well as last location because there's only a few towers. Yeah. See? And they said they couldn't do that. It, like you say, like the private investigators have been a bit of a dead end. And, and it seems what Mr. T really needs now is some kind of legal counsel. In other words, advisement of how do you subpoena these phone records? How do you subpoena records? How? And, and I know that he, when we talked to him, he alluded that he has something in the work. So I, I hope that really is going to come to fruition. And I know that's not easy either. Yeah. Well, we, the thing is, there's all, we've always had something like in the works or someone said they're going to help and it yeah. doesn't come to anything. Yeah, he mentioned that. Because there's, there's literally only me, him, his mom, and other people when they want to get involved other than that. Um, like if people wanted Dr. Phil's called, okay, I'll go on Dr. Phil. Other than that, you don't hear from anyone. Now I know that you have a GoFundMe campaign uh, mm. active. Is, is how is that doing? Not good. Mm. Not good. No, because I don't know. We don't really know how to work these things. But even I think Dr. Phil, Vice, Deadline, all of these publications and broadcasters, they're big things. Um, but still the push for Terence's story has not been the same because he's a black man. I'll tell you guys a story like two black girls got murdered last year um, in London and literally their case hardly ever received any um, notice in the news. Two, their sisters. Well, it's like, you know, the, we had the big case a few years ago, the Grim Sleeper in LA that was cracked and T turned out the cops were saying they used the term no humans involved. In other words, all of the victims were black women. Yeah, I was doing that case last year. Ah, he died. Yeah, he died as soon as I got back to London. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Rochelle, did you hear about this other this other guy that passed away? Um, Jesse Goins, a gold miner who appeared on the same show Terrence yeah. Woods was working. What, what are your yeah. thoughts on that? And they put out a big news article and everything about it. And then some people who watch Gold Rust, they say, were saying, what about Terrence Woods? Why has no one said anything about Terrence Woods? Do you he think probably, there's any connection or do you think the show is cursed? What do you what do you think that's about? Or is it the just show a, is definitely cursed because I know people who have worked on it and they said it's got a massive bullying culture. Massive, mahusive bullying culture. You've got these like big macho men, old school TV directors who just want to make sure that they've got it done. A lot of them have got PTS depression because of how they've been treated in the industry and how long they've been working in there for. So it's got a massive bullying culture. And also one thing that I need to make aware is that Terence, it's not the first time Terence has worked for Raw TV. He worked with them in London and a couple months before he went missing, he worked with them in Alaska and he came home to London and he was fine. 
And another thing, because I listened to Mr. T's podcast with you guys, um, in terms of Terence talking to Simon G beforehand, he probably didn't even speak to Simon G beforehand. When you're on production, it's just like, okay, this is who you're going to be with. That's it. You, sh- you show you up. Here's it. your call time. Yeah. You know. That's your call time. Right. That's it. So right. um, Simon probably didn't even speak. He probably They probably mentioned, okay, we got this guy, Terrence Woods. He seems great. And that's it. But I highly doubt that they ever had a conversation. Rochelle, um, we talked a little bit about the media coverage of Terrence's mm. disappearance in the U.S. and how it really hasn't been prolific. You yeah. know, a couple articles here and there, but Mm-mm. has fizzled out. Uh, what about in U- in the UK? Nothing. Uh, when it first happened. Was there coverage? Is there any coverage at all? Nothing. No, no coverage at all about. There's still no coverage about Terence in the UK. Nothing. Wow. There's Vice. Um, well, okay, okay, that's Vice UK ish. But Deadline that was still basically an American because I never heard of Deadline before. My friends brought it to my attention, by the way. And Doctor Phil. No show will take it because no broadcaster will take it because he's a u.s citizen and it happened in the u.s that's the problem but people fail to understand that it was a uk production company that have done this it seems like there's like the his story is a little bit of a gray area you know it's it's uk you can use an excuse here he's american here and it's just Mm. kind of falling in in between the cracks a little bit yeah yeah but i'll tell you something is that raw and discovery they're very scared because they know that something, in Terence's case, is going to blow up soon, and they're very scared of what's going to happen. So they should be. You know, sooner or later, I was. We were talking about yeah. this before you jumped on. Sooner or later, someone's conscience, yeah, is gonna is gonna come clean and go. I I I can't do with this anymore, and they're gonna they're yeah. gonna say something. Yeah, because I hope I hope it is killing their conscience right now. Because every bit I put, like my whole year last year, I put into practically Terence's disappearance, where I nearly got myself into like I nearly had a mental breakdown last year. Um, near Christmas because I was just like this is just too much because I was trying to do everything even now I've done everything and I still don't feel like I've done enough how can Um, our listeners help how can how can the rest of the public um, our listeners the rest of the public help solve the mystery of of Terrence's disappearance try and get people to speak up if you know anyone post his story um if anyone knows anyone who might be able to help Mr. T with the laptop who lives locally like anyone at all who can help in this case and think, you know what, I'm a genuine, they're a genuine person and could be of any assistance, lawyers, crime experts, anything. Um, we need help with everything because we don't literally don't have anything for anyone. Rochelle, what else do we need to know about why it has been so difficult to get more information or to have any breakthroughs on Terrence's whereabouts? I mean, just go into maybe some more of the roadblocks that seem to be unique to this case. Uh, The TV industry is corrupt, first of all, Um, and that they just, it's just the money, everything in life now, we should, yeah, yeah, money is important and very important, but the TV industry is just corrupt and people just don't care about anyone or anything. I don't know if you guys have seen on Instagram, there's this page called IA underscore stories and people in the TV industry are just talking about their stories and what they've been through. They've got over 40,000 followers now and people talk about their experiences anonymously. Like the industry is is dying and people are actually dying in the industry. Um, So there's a big problem. There's, There's a massive problem. It, it definitely it's it's you know as you know it's 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 all about your next job and and people just don't want to do anything that's going to rock uh that opportunity yeah, and so it's it's rather yeah. they would put their head in the sand and move on and and you know be a team player than 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 do the right thing yeah then do that and, and that's the problem it doesn't it doesn't help anyone i think a lot of people not speaking up about terence's case is causing more harm than good because if this was to happen again then someone else is going to be losing a family member but the thing is is what people don't understand is that this is the biggest thing ever in tv and film in this tv and film industry to ever happen this is the biggest thing to ever happen full stop and look at how it's been treated i agree when i i just you know when i first saw the article on deadline number years ago i was like why isn't this on you know every news channel i couldn't i i still do not understand 
yeah. you know, why? And that actually leads me to my next question. Um, and you kind of briefly touched on this already, but what individual or organization has been the most, most helpful in spreading the word about Terrence? Nothing. No one. Me. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, Mr. T gave the exact same answer. I mean, this, this is unbelievable. Me, like Mr. T, if it wasn't for me actually reaching out to Mr. T and talking to him and actually like, raw, there's so much more to this. And I learned more about Terrence from him and everything and about their life and the way they're living. And I can tell you for a fact, if Terrence wanted to disappear, he would have disappeared in the UK. He's not going to go and disappear. Yeah, in the yeah you don't go home to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. he's not He's not going to do that. And that's what I'm saying to people. This is wrong. And people are like, oh, did he have mental health? I don't give a crap. Even if Terrence did have mental health problems, he's not at home. That is the biggest problem. He's not at home. Well, Rochelle, as we wrap it up, we just want to give you the floor here at the end to say anything else you'd like to about Terrence and the ongoing efforts to find out what actually happened to him. So take take it away. I just want to say to the TV industry and everyone out there is that you guys all need to do more to help support Terrence's case and find out what happened to, to him, but also support one another. For anyone that's going to be listening from Raw and Discovery, because I know they will, your conscience is going to kill you and we will find out what happened to Terrence. And I hope anything bad that happens to you will happen to you because it needs to because you're just a bad person and I am just so sick and tired of this industry um although I love what I do and I love helping people I won't be working in the tv industry full-time ever again um until I have my own company and my own things because people are just losing their lives and I will continue to fight for Terrence and to find out what happened to him that's it that, that's a great statement. We really appreciate your your unique insight on this disturbing mystery. And we, of yeah. course, hope that Terrence's family's, family gets some answers and relief very soon. And we, we want to thank you so much for taking the time. We know it's late there for joining us today on uh, Crime Redefined. No, thank you, guys. Thank you so much for what you're doing. I'm so glad we talked to Rochelle. She really helps fill in some of the blanks. She has been really an excellent soldier for the Woods family, and it's sad to see, you know, how she's been so negatively affected by all of this. Well, I, you know, I would say it's definitely one thing to be sort of passively involved in crime research and, and journalism. But, man, it's a whole different emotional level when the case you're working in, you know, is close to you and involves a loved one. But, you know, even if you don't know parties involved in a case, this, I think this is an excellent reminder to anybody working in the criminal justice system, whether you're a detective or you're working in the crime lab or you're just even doing true crime podcasts, you know, you can be deeply affected by these kind of things. And I can tell you, Dion, that I routinely see absolutely horrifying images and I read detailed case accounts of some of the worst things imaginable. It's just unbelievable what people can do to each other. And I think that when you do this type of work, you have to be mindful of the cumulative effect of these things. Um, almost like like a poison. Like, okay, I, you might say, well, this doesn't bug me, this doesn't affect me. But after doing it for months and months and years and years, and actually, it seemed like it's subconsciously, sort of you don't know how it's stacking up on you. Exactly, it seems like it was starting to catch up with with Rochelle. Yeah, almost to where it, it sounded at the end of the conversation like she wanted to, to tap out. She she just didn't have any more left in the tank. But right. I mean, we know she's a she's a soldier. And she's going to keep moving forward. Um, I think she also laid out a, a good reminder about the entertainment industry and and the sometimes dark side of it. Um, you know, I'm spending years and years um, on set. You know, there's a lot of great people. So let me start there. There's, you know, I've, I've been have been really fortunate to know some really nice and really kind people. But, uh, you know, these sets can be very cliquish, um, you know, very territorial. Um, and there can be some some ugliness to it, and uh, it, you know, hopefully that's that's not the case. Um, but um, I've seen I've seen both sides of it, and it's a shame the other one goes on. But I'm I'm sure that you have that in in every workplace. Yeah, and I, I think in the entertainment industry, you know, it's one thing if it's like ha ha ha, the PA has to get everybody's coffee order right or whatever. But when it gets to that next level of essentially bullying or something like that, that's just unacceptable anywhere. No, I, I couldn't agree more. And hopefully, you know, by us, you know, talking about it and just putting it more out in the zeitgeist and people are paying attention, you know, the less of that will will take place. In other words, if, you know, you shine a, um, 
a spotlight on it, people aren't, aren't going to do it. And that's just, you know, I think what we need to do. Yeah. Well, you know, when you compare Terrence's case uh, to, say, a cold case or a post-conviction case, you know, if you don't have any new physical evidence that turns up, which we don't seem to have in Terrence's case, well, the next best thing would be to develop, to develop new witnesses. And so what I thought was really remarkable is, you know, how Rochelle said that there was a lady who saw Terrence in the supermarket and that's huge because that then seemed to disrupt the timeline of when he went missing because the implication was that from the time that she saw him in the supermarket to the time he went missing, he couldn't have possibly gotten up the hill in that time period. That was really riveting to listen to for the first time. You know, it's our hope that by us, you know, staying involved in and keeping Terrence's story alive, that somehow, some way, even more people will come forward. And all it takes is a small kernel of information to snowball into something bigger. And I truly believe, we discussed this with with Rochelle, that you know, sooner or later, someone's going to clear their want to clear their conscience on this. Good, bad, or ugly, whatever the information is, they're going to want to get it off their chest. Yeah, and also I would say in terms of you know the possibility of people like attorneys or experts jumping in to help on the case. Uh, it, it may seem from the outside now that it, it's overwhelming that there's kind of nothing to work with, right? But when you start to get more and more new leads, like the lady in the supermarket, I mean, that hope that some of the rocks have unturned and there's new info out there, that might actually ignite someone to get off of the sidelines and help involved in the investigation. Or just, re- or maybe just help someone remember, hey, you know what? Maybe I did see that guy. You know? Right, right. Um, It was pretty hard to hear that Rochelle was concerned not just about her career, but even her life. I mean, no one should have to go through that when you're trying to, you know, find find a missing friend, you know, but it shows that you can never be too careful when you start turning over rocks and stirring up things in in, in whatever industry, not just the entertainment. Um, But she's shown such a loyalty and bravery. bravery, And like she says, um, if she doesn't do it, who will? Yeah, and then this whole next level, the fact that this is basically a – international case Uh, on one hand the key witnesses are now in the uk but basically this is is played out and portrayed as a u.s case and i think rochelle hit it on the head when she labeled this as an international missing persons investigation and my gosh dion that that sounds daunting uh, especially if two people are working on it and i wanted to ask you as as our entertainment guy uh, you know, what are your thoughts on uh, the suggestion that maybe Terrence's disappearance is one of the biggest mysteries ever, you know, on, on a production set or in the entertainment industry? Well, there's obviously been some big ones like Natalie Wood and some other yeah. cases like that, but that wasn't on a set. So as far as a set goes, it's that I can think of right now. I, I don't know. It, it's funny because it's definitely the biggest but it's also the least well known, which is what we've been kind of going and harping on from the most very mysterious. Beginning. Yeah, because you know, of the lack which, of the, which in itself is a mystery. And that also leads to, you know, kind of a conspiracy, you know, for conspiracies to, to pop up. Um, but I, I agree. I, I think it's one of the biggest ones because this was directly on a set. You just don't walk off a set and never to be heard or seen from again. It just does not happen. But I think the problem is what you just laid out and what Rochelle laid out was the gray area with this is that once country saying, Oh, he's a UK guy and another one saying, Oh, it's a U.S. deal. And then it, all it does is fall through the cracks. Yeah. That's exactly, that's exactly the word I was going to use falling through the cracks. So crime redefines call to action for our wonderful listeners and social media followers is, you know, please get the word out about our episodes and about Terrence Wood, Terrence Woods, you know, tell a friend, let people know about this mystery one way or the other And of course, if anybody out there has any info or can provide any technical assistance, please let us know or Rochelle know or Terrence Wood Sr. Yeah, not only that, but give us your take. You know, I know that there's a lot of uh, amateur sleuths out there. That's right. Listen to our podcast, listen to some of the experts, do your own investigation, you know, and then, you know, send us a message, you know, send Rochelle a message, send Terrence Sr. a message and give us your take. So maybe... You know, there's some uh, some cloud investigation that yeah, we can right. do and put together, and maybe that helps put these these uh, these pieces together where we can try to get a better idea of uh, of what happened to Terrence. Yeah, and to that end, you know, maybe there's uh, 
somebody else we should interview on Crime Redefined. Um, I know there's one. Yeah, who person. do we miss? That's a great point. Yeah, who, who do missed? we miss? Um, should we should we keep going? You know, can, can we offer value here? Um, it'll be interesting to see how this evolves. So yeah, please uh, l- let us know. Then definitely like. Like Rochelle says, um, news moves on. So hopefully Terrence's story can gain some real momentum now. Um, Rochelle's Twitter handle is at Rochelle Newman. That's R-O-C-H-E-L-L-E-S-N-E-W-M-A-N. Uh, there's also a, a Twitter account for Find Terrence Woods, which is at Find Terrence Woods, which F-I-N-D-T-E-R-R-E-N-C-E-W-D-S. And there's also a Twitter hashtag for this case, which is hashtag Find Terrence Woods. Also, if you can, uh, please contribute to the GoFundMe set up for Terrence Woods, the, the campaign um, entitled Find My Missing Son, uh, Terrence Woods. It actually looks like the goal of funding the amount the campaign is in sight. So we, if you can do, you know, a dollar, that'd be great. I'm sure that Terrence Sr. would appreciate it. And once again, we hope all our listeners and followers are, are finding the saga interesting and as always we truly appreciate all the support we have received worldwide until next time be well thank you for listening to the crime redefined podcast like us on facebook and follow us on twitter at crime redefined please send us your comments and questions and join us for the next episode